Are you always on the lookout for more tutorials on how to color line art with depth, dimension, and realism? You're not alone. You've got the markers, you've got the colored pencils, and a great big collection of guaranteed realistic color combinations. So why don't they work? Hmm, it's because line art is a language and you're not fluent in the language yet. Today, let's explore how artists speak, not in words, but in lines. I teach marker and colored pencil art classes at every level, from beginner to advanced. And I've been doing this full time for over a decade. Over the years, I've talked to a lot of beginners and people returning to art after a lifetime of doing everyday normal work and family stuff. The overwhelming thing that everyone has in common, you chose markers or colored pencil because you love color. And when you think about art, your mind swims in color. So it's only natural to assume that professional and serious artists, the people who live and breathe illustration art all the time, you assume we think in color. But that's not really true. Our first language is line. Now, I can't say for sure about you personally, but most of the colorists and marker enthusiasts that I meet, you don't draw. Some of you have never had the opportunity to learn. Some of you have tried it and failed. Some of you are tracing or mimicking drawings that you've seen online. And the overwhelming majority of students that I meet, they simply have no desire to learn to draw. It's not that you're scared, you're not against it, it's just not something that sparks interest for you. And that's okay. While drawing is an excellent skill to have in your repertoire, and I do think it's much harder to grow and progress in art without basic drawing skills. Having said all that, I know a lot of professional artists who trace their reference photos and then paint or color them in. They can get away with it because drawing and painting are two completely different skills. Yes, they're related. And for me and my little brain, drawing and coloring are totally intertwined. But I know people who can paint better than they draw and people who draw better than they paint. And that's kind of what you're doing with the markers and the colored pencils. You're painting without drawing. If you're a colorist who's working from someone else's line art, from a stamp or a coloring book, you're painting someone else's drawing. And if you do fan art or comic manga drawings, you're redrawing someone else's drawing. In both cases, the language of line often gets garbled. Let's play a game. I'm going to start a sentence and you finish it for me. And I do mean finish it for me. Don't tell me what you think. I want you to finish the sentence in the way that I would finish the sentence. So here we go. Today for breakfast, I had... My favorite music is... If the house was on fire, I'm grabbing this before I go. This is a stupid test, right? You don't know me. You've never even been in a room with me. Heck, my son is editing this video, and I'll bet even he can't correctly finish all three sentences. Hey, no, that's not even close. Hmm, this explains why the Mother's Day present is always a little bit off the mark. Anyway, there's a point to this experiment. It explains why your coloring always feels off, because you didn't draw the line art. Coloring someone else's line art is like trying to finish a stranger's sentences. When you watch someone sketch, you're literally watching them think on paper. For people who can't draw, you're just assuming that I'm in robot mode right now. Beep, beep, boop, here's your ice cream cone. But that's not what's happening at all. Yes, I'm looking at an ice cream cone reference and I'm capturing the basic likeness. But I'm also thinking about my memories of ice cream in the past. 
I'm thinking about what it tastes like, what it feels like. There's a lot of me in this sketch. I'm also looking at the lines as a technician. I'm judging each line's strength and tonal quality. I'm exaggerating some lines and deleting others. So basically, I'm absorbing reference information with my eyes, but then I'm modifying it with my brain to tell you my ice cream story with a pencil. Artists communicate with lines. So you're not buying my ice cream cone digital stamp. You're buying my idea of an ice cream cone. And when you color it, it's your job to finish my sentences. If you do it wrong, it's gonna look weird every time. Coloring someone else's sentence is hard if you don't speak the language. And while the best answer to this problem would be to learn how to draw, we all know that's not gonna happen in the next 10 minutes. So let's talk about what you're seeing in professional line art and where the communication breaks down, because this is a sign of a breakdown. And so is this. And so is the fact that people keep begging me for a video on how to color clothing, when really we use the same technique on clothes that we do on flowers all the time. As a matter of fact, this ice cream video is using clothing technique too. When your leaf, your ice cream, or the long flowing wedding dress looks weird, it's usually not because you used the wrong colors. It's because you misinterpreted the line art. It's all about continuing the communication. And by the way, don't you dare think for even a second that this is just a problem for stampers or card makers or coloring book people. The number one mistake I see in comic fan art is this. And you're doing this even when you drew the image yourself. It's because you're mimicking a drawing language that you don't speak very well yet. But don't worry, we can fix this problem for everyone, and it's easier than you think. Okay, so the first thing to understand is that drawing classes teach people to accurately visualize form. A form is kind of like the shape of something, but shape is a two-dimensional silhouette, whereas the form is a three-dimensional version of that shape. And I'm not kidding. Artists think about form constantly. I mean, we're trained to think this way. But even if we weren't formally trained, I think there's an instinct for form that most artists are born with. We just zero in on the form. So it's a pretty universal truth. Because we're so focused on form, the line art that we draw for you is pretty clear about the form. So you'll see strong outlines and well-defined shapes in every good digital stamp, coloring book, or comic book. And I know you understand this because I've never come across a marker student who didn't understand the difference between the ice cream cone and the background. It's really only when we move inside the outlines that the communication starts to break down. Okay, so every doofus and their brother understands that this is ice cream and this is background. But tell me more about the difference between this and this. Ah, that's the heart of the problem. This is the reason why some of the stuff that you color looks a little weird. And it's also the reason why you're adding extra contrast to your blending combinations. And why you're coming back with a big black micron pen to add more definition to the line work that's already there. I told you earlier, artists draw forms. This is a form. And this is a form. But this is also a form. You're looking at these interior lines and thinking of them as decoration. You have no problem understanding that this way out here is an edge. But folks, all the lines in here are edges too. Failure to acknowledge interior forms leaves you playing a guessing game. We've got all this, this stuff going on in the center of the ice cream here, and you're really not sure what to do with it all. So you take your darkest marker and you run it over the lines to emphasize them, which looks weird. 
because it doesn't complete the sentence very well. But Amy, you don't understand. I'm shading. Okay, I get that. But you're shading the wrong thing. The line artist has drawn forms for you, right? This is a form, and this is a form. But you're running dark marker down both sides of the line like you're digging the Marianas Trench. And you'd never do it to this outline, so why are you doing it to this one? This line is an edge. Don't color it like a ditch. See, here in the reference, here is the edge of the form. This area back here is shaded. It's part of another form, one that's sitting behind this form. So with this line, the line artist is telling you where the edge between light and dark sits. It's light on one side of the edge, indicating that this is part of the form that's catching a little bit of light. It's a different value on the other side of the edge because that's a totally different form. When you put the same color or the same value on both sides of the line, you're mushing the forms together. And this is why it looks weird. When you're coming in with that dark shady color, you gotta pick a side. Okay, I've showed you with ice cream. Now let's look back at those common mistakes that I mentioned earlier. Here's that leaf, and you will see a ton of people coloring leaves this way. But the artist wasn't drawing veins for you here. And I know this is hard to wrap your brain around because ever since preschool, you and all the people around you have been calling this a vein. But trust me, in line art, these are not veins. And the artist really, really, really is not telling you to run your dark marker over this line six or seven times. The artist is saying, hey folks, there's an edge here. We've got light on one side and dark on the other. Now you pick a side. Color the edge. Don't dig a ditch. Next scenario, here's some muscles. Is the artist telling you to dig a ditch in the arm here? No, pick a side. Color the edge. Next one, here's a cupcake wrapper. This is an edge, and 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 this is an edge. Too many people think this line is the bottom of a dark ditch. Artists don't draw the bottom of ditches. We draw the edges. Pick a side. Always color the edge. Okay, allow me one final point here. Something for you to think about. No pressure, no judgment, just something to think about. I know that most of the people watching marker videos here at YouTube, and let's face it, we're probably talking about you here, you're here to learn how to color with markers for free. Maybe you're trying to save money to buy more markers, or maybe you just have the idea that there's no reason to pay for a class because the information is all available for free right here. I get it. But raise your hand if you've been coloring ditches for more than one month. Raise your hand if you kind of knew about the edge thing, but you've never heard anybody explain it clearly before. And raise your hand if you've been amplifying the contrast on your images to get more definition, or if you've been hacking away at the outlines with more black ink. Nobody with their hand in the air right now is stupid. Your hand's in the air because you fell into an information gap. I'm sure there are other videos out there that are talking about this exact same subject, but either you didn't know to click on the video, or for whatever reason, the information just didn't flip the switch on the light bulb over your head. This is the problem with self-study. You don't know what you don't know. And watching random videos means you're creating lots of little information gaps. There's a reason people study art. And by study, I mean studying the process of art exactly as if it was calculus or technical repair. Practice is not the same as study. Watching videos is not the same as study. Yes, I teach art classes, but I'm not here telling you to buy one of my classes. We live in a time when there are lots of really great artists and illustrators who are teaching classes and courses. They're showing you how to do exactly what they do. There is some amazing stuff out there, and these professionals can get you moving in the right direction. 
but we can't do it all for free here on YouTube. So just consider it. Find an artist that you really admire and take one of their workshops or maybe just one class. I can guarantee you're going to learn things that you didn't know you needed to know. Kind of like the ditch thing here today. Just think about it. Learning can be easier. If you want more information about the Ice Cream Cone Project, this lesson and many others are part of my Color Wonk membership for intermediates. Link is down in the description. And for another lesson about coloring the form, try my donut video here.